Wonder. Out with the old. Miranda and Ella blasted off. They attached themselves to a new crowd, destined for high school glory. And after a week where all they would do is talk about people that didn't interest me, I decided to make a clean break for it. They asked no questions. I told no lies. We went our separate ways. I didn't even mind after a while. I stopped going to lunch for about a week, though, to make the transition easier, to avoid the, oh, there's no room for you at the table, Olivia, it was just easier to go to the library and read. I finished War and Peace in October. It was amazing. People think it's a hard read, but it's really just a soap opera with lots of characters, people falling in love, fighting for love. I wanted to be in love like that someday. I ended up hanging out with a girl named Eleanor, who I'd known from my days at PS22, though we'd gone to different middle schools. Eleanor had always been a really smart girl, a little bit of a crybaby, but nice. I never realized how funny she was. Not laugh out loud, daddy funny, but full of great quips, and I never knew how lighthearted I could be. Eleanor, I guess, had always been under the impression that it was very serious, and it turns out she had never liked Miranda and Ella. She thought they were stuck up. I gained entry through Eleanor to the smart kids table at lunch. It was a larger group than I'd been accustomed to hanging out with and a more diverse crowd. It included Ella's boyfriend, Kevin, who was the class president someday, a few techie guys, girls like Eleanor, who were members of the yearbook committee in the debate club, and a quiet guy named Justin, who had small glasses and played the violin. When I see Miranda and Ella, who are now hanging out with the super popular set, we'd say, hey, and move on. Occasionally, they would ask me how August was doing, and then I'd then say, tell him I said hello. This I never did, not to spite Miranda, but because August was in his own world these days. There were times at home that we never crossed paths. October 31st. Grants had passed the night before Halloween. Since then, even though it's been four years, it's always been a sad time of year. For mom, too, this she doesn't say it. She immersed herself in August's costume ready since we all know Halloween is his favorite. This year was no different. August really wanted to be a Star Wars character called Boba Fett, so mom looked for a Boba Fett costume in August size, which strangely enough was out of stock everywhere. She went to every store online, found a few on eBay that were going for an outrageous amount, and finally ended up buying a Jango Fett costume that she converted into Boba Fett by painting it green. I would say in all, she must have spent two weeks working on that costume. And no, I won't mention the fact that mom has never made any of my costumes because it has no bearing on anything at all. The morning of Halloween, I woke up thinking about grands, which made me sad and weepy. Dad kept telling me to hurry up and get dressed, which stressed me out even more, and suddenly I started crying. I just wanted to stay home. So dad took August to school that morning, and mom said I could stay home, and the two of us cried together for a while. One thing I knew for sure, however much I miss grands, mom must have missed her more. Graham had always been there for mom. It felt good to cry with mom. For both of us. At some point, mom had the idea of watching our, of our watching The Ghost and Mrs. Muir together, which was one of our all-time favorite black and white movies. I agreed that it was a great idea. I think I probably would have used this weeping session as an opportunity to tell mom everything that was going on at school with Miranda and Ella. But just as we were sitting down in front of the DVD player, the phone rang. It was the nurse from August's school calling to tell mom that August had a stomach ache and should be picked up. So much for the old movies and the mother-daughter bonding. Mom picked August up, and the moment he came home, he went straight to the bathroom and threw up. Then he went to his bed and pulled the covers over his head. Mom took his temperature, brought him some tea, and amused the assumed the August mom role again. Via's mom, who had come out for a little while, was put away. I understood, though, August was in bad shape. Neither one of us had asked why he had worn a different costume to school instead of Boba Fett. Mom made for him. If it annoyed mom to see the costume she had worked on for two weeks tossed on the floor unused, she didn't show it. Trick or treat. August said he wasn't feeling well enough to go trick or treating later in the afternoon, which was sad for him because I know how much he loved trick or treat, especially after it got dark outside. Even though I was well beyond the trick or treating stage myself, I usually threw on some mask or other to accompany him up and down the blocks, watching him knock on people's doors, giddy with excitement. I knew it was the one night a year where he could truly be like every other kid. No one knew he was different. To August, that must have felt absolutely amazing. At 7 o'clock that night, I knocked on his door. Hey, I said. Hey, he said back. He wasn't using his PlayStation or reading a comic book. He was just lying on his bed looking at the ceiling. Daisy, as always, was le laying next to him on the bed, her head draped over his legs. His costume was crumpled on the floor next to the Boba Fret costume. How's your stomach? I said, sitting next to him on the bed. I'm still nauseous. 
You sure you're not up for the Halloween parade? Positive. This surprised me. Usually August was such a trooper about his medical issues. Whether it was skateboarding a few days after a surgery or sipping through food through a straw when his mouth was bolted shut. This was the kid who's gotten more shots, taken medicine, put up with procedures by the age of 10 that most people would ever have to put up with in 10 lifetimes. And he was sidelined from a little nausea. You want to tell me what's up? I said, sounding a little bit like mom. No. Is it school? Yes. Teachers, schoolwork, friends? He didn't answer. Did someone say something? I said, people always say something. He answered bitterly. I could tell he was crying. Tell me what happened, I said. And he told me what happened. He had overheard some very mean things some boys were saying about him. He didn't care about what the other boys said. He expected that. But he was hurt that one of the boys, his best friend, Jack Will. I remembered his mentioning Jack a couple times over the past month. I remember mom and dad saying he seemed like a really nice kid, saying they were glad August had made a friend like that. Some kids are mean, I said, softly holding his hand. I'm sure he didn't mean it. Then why would he say it? He's been pretending to be my friend all along. Tushman probably bribed him with good grades. I bet he was like, hey, Jack, if you make friends with this freak, you don't have to take tests this year. You know that's not true, and don't call yourself a freak. <sighs> I wish I had never gone to school in the first place, but I thought you were liking it. I hate it. He was angry all of a sudden, punching his pillow. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. He was shrieking at the top of his lungs. I didn't say anything. I didn't know what to say. He was hurt. He was mad. I let him have a few more minutes of his fury. Daisy started licking the tears off his face. Come on, Augie, I said, patting his back gently. Why don't you go put on your Django Fett costume and... It's a Boba Fett costume. Why does everyone mix that up? Boba Fett costume, I said, trying to stay calm. I put my arm around his shoulders. Let's just go to the parade, okay? If I go to the parade, mom will think I'm feeling better and make me go to school tomorrow. Mom will never make you go to school, I answered. Come on, Augie, let's just go. It'll be fun, I promise. And I'll let you have all my candy. He didn't argue. He got out of bed and slowly started pulling on his Boba Fett costume. I helped him adjust the straps and tighten the belt. And by the time he put his helmet on, I could tell he was feeling better. Time to think. August played up the stomach ache the next day so he wouldn't have to go to school. I admit I, I, admit I felt a little bad for a mom who was genuinely concerned that he had a stomach bug but I had promised August I wouldn't tell her about the incident at school. By Sunday, he was determined not to go back to school. What are you planning on telling mom and dad? I asked him when he told me this. They said I could quit whenever I wanted to. He said this while he was still focusing on a comic book he was reading. But you've never been the kid who quits anything, I said. That's not like you. I'm quitting. You're going to have to tell mom and dad why, I pointed out, pulling the comic book out of his hands so he'd have to look up at me while we were talking. The mom will call the school and everyone will know about it. Will Jack get in trouble? I would think so. Good. I have to admit, August was surprising me more and more. He pulled another comic book off his shelf and started leaping through it. Augie, I said, are you really going to let a couple of kids keep you from going back to school? I know you've been enjoying it. Don't let them have that power over you. Don't give them the satisfaction. They have no idea. I even heard them, he explained. No, I know, but... Leah, it's okay. I know what I'm doing. I've made up my mind. But this is crazy, Augie, I said empathetically, pulling the new comic book away from him too. You have to go to school. Everyone doesn't like school sometimes. I don't like it sometimes. I sometimes don't like my friends, but that's just life. You want to be treated normal, right? This is normal. We have to go to school despite the fact we have bad days, okay? Do people go out of their way to avoid touching you, Via? He answered, which left me momentarily without an answer. Yeah, right. That's what I thought. So don't compare your bad days at school to mine, okay? Okay, that's fair, I said. But it's not a contest about whose days stink the most. The point is we have to put up with the bad days. Now, unless you want to be treated like a baby the rest of your life or like a kid with special needs, you have to suck it up and go. He didn't say anything, but I think that last bit was getting to him. You don't have to say a word to those kids, I continued. August, it's actually so cool that you... um that you know what they said, but they don't know what you said, you know? What? You know what I mean. You don't have to talk to them ever again if you don't want, and they'll never know why. Or you can pretend to be friends with them, but deep down inside, you know you're not. Is that how you are with Miranda, he asked? No, I answered quickly, defensively. I never faked my feelings with Miranda. So why are you saying I should? I'm not. I'm saying you should let those mean kids get to you. That's all. Like Miranda got to you? 
Why do you keep bringing Miranda up? I yelled impatiently. I'm trying to talk to you about your friends. Please keep mine out of it. You're not even friends with her anymore. What does that have to do with what we're talking about? The way August was looking at me reminded of a doll's face. He was just staring at me blankly with his half-closed doll eyes. She called the other day, he said finally. What? I was stunned. And you didn't tell me? She wasn't calling you, he answered, pulling both comic books out of my hands. She was calling me to say hi, to see how I was doing. She didn't even know I was going to a real school now. I can't believe you didn't tell her. She said the two of you don't hang out as much, but she wanted me to know she'd always love me like a big sister. Double stunned, stung, flabbergasted. No words formed in my mouth. Why didn't you tell me, I said finally. I don't know. He shrugged, opening the first comic book again. Well, I'm telling mom and dad about Jack Will if you stop going to school, I answered. Tushman will probably call you into school and make those other kids apologize to you in front of everyone. And everyone will treat you like a kid who should be going to school for kids with special needs. Is that what you want? Because that's what's going to happen. Otherwise, go back to school and act like nothing happened. Or if you want to confront Jack about it, fine. But either way, if you... Fine, 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 he interrupted. What? Fine, I'll go, he yelled. Not loudly. Just stop talking about it. Can I please read my books now? Fine, I answered, turning to leave his room. I thought of something. Did Miranda say anything else about me? He looked up from the comic book and looked right into my eyes. She said to tell you she misses you, quote, unquote. I nodded. Thanks, I said casually, too embarrassed to let him see how happy that made me feel.